Hello, my name is Ian Peterman. I'm CEO and founder of Peterman Design Firm. And today I want to talk about types of prototypes, uh, not methods. You know, this isn't 3D printing versus CNC or something like that. Uh, it's about prototypes and how they're used and when we use them. And I talked about it a little bit, talking about uh, cost for prototypes, you know, what they cost. And I mentioned some of the pricing difference between prototypes comes down to what it's for and therefore the type of prototype they were doing. So there's kind of four general categories uh, when I talk to clients that I talk about in terms of prototyping. There's fit ones, which are they're just for fit. They're not cosmetic. They're not going to necessarily look pretty. It's just to make sure that parts fit together. So assembly works, um, you know, you might be swapping out. We might make a 3D printed circuit board, which means it's not an actual circuit board. It's just a shape and an object that is the right, that fits the right 3D physical form so that we can, you know, go through assembly, make sure that uh, there's tools for assembling, make sure that it goes through the process properly, make sure that there's, um, you know, it's like you would do something like that for body paneling on a car, make sure the body panel gaps are right, make sure everything fits, make sure screws fit, make sure hardware fits, all those, whatever those components are, make sure they fit together and they look right. Um, so it's, you know, press fit parts and anything else like that. Then you have cosmetic ones. And those are the, you might make an entire product. You might, for example, use my mouse again, you might make this as one 3D printed part. For example, there's no electronics in it. It could be completely empty. It's, it's gonna be finished up. This could all be one, one hunk of plastic uh, that has been sanded and finished and, and cleaned up and now it's looks like this. You would pick it up and go, oh, that's pretty great. And you notice that it was pretty light because it had nothing inside of it. Uh, but you would be able to look at it and say, oh, this is what it's going to look like. I know exactly what it's going to look like in its physical form. You can play with it. You know, it's basically uh, the pre-rendering. This is what you would do. You would make a, make a cosmetic model. And they're really great for presentations. Um, you can send them to people to get input. You can, you know, put them in different scenarios. You can use them for photography, product photography, because it looks like the real thing. Um, but it won't work. They're not even the right components. It's not for anything production related. Um, and we use those a lot in concepting. So if we're concepting and we're getting down to a few different options that we really want to see what the product looks like in certain situations and you know renders are great but they only go so far and even with advances in vr and ar technology you know it only gets you so far right now and so nothing beats creating a mock-up model cosmetic model and putting it in its actual habitat where is it going to actually be and looking at it and you know not actually using it but I can sure pretend to use this mouse if it weren't a real one. I could pretend to use it. I could move it around on my desk. I can feel it, and I'd have an idea of what it's gonna what's gonna feel like, what it's gonna look like, um, you know. And especially for high aesthetic products, it can be very valuable. Uh, it's also something that people use in presentations um, as a cosmetic model, so they can show this is what the product is going to look like or this is what we think it'll look like and we want to ideate with that. Um, then we have kind of a mix. Um, Pre-production and production are basically the, really similar, but pre-production means that you're not using the actual tooling. So this is, you know, like what I talked about before on injection molding is doing things that aren't the actual final process. You're not actually running a real final tooling but you are producing the parts to spec. So that means it's still getting produced, it's still getting finished. So, you know, if it's painted, if it has electronics on it, electronics are in it. Um, and sometimes you, we call them pre-production, sometimes we call them functional. Um, the only difference, and in a, kind of in that same bucket, the only difference is 
pre-production, you're going to finish it completely. Functional means that it's not just a fit model. You're using real hardware in it, but you're not doing things like painting it. It's going to be raw plastic or raw metal, and it's just to make sure you know fun it functions. So lights turn on, screen turns on, push buttons on a screen, it does X. Connect it to your phone, phone app you click, it does something. Uh, that's a function. And pre-production just takes it one little step. It's it's the fancier version of a function one in that you finish it. So now it it looks like it. It is it. It's unless you knew and understood the production process and what the final, you know, production tooling is gonna do, if you know the difference and can tell apart whether it's injection molded or it's been a highly finished. 3D printed part cosmetically because you know what it seems you know you know what it's supposed to look like and with the lines that you get when you have it injection molded if you can't if you don't know what those are then you wouldn't know the difference between a pre-production and actual production and then the last bucket is production prototypes and those are just really just first runs so it's on production tooling the final manufacturer is making it. Uh, they are on the right tool and they've been shipped through the right processes. They've gone through packaging. They have everything. It is, you could sell it. And all the, the only point of that is to make sure that all the tooling and all the prototyping, all that work done actually has created a product that meets those requirements. And that those pre-production or those production prototypes Sorry, those are what you, if you're doing an influencer campaign, those are probably what you send off. They're not first, you know, if you were to sell like a number one, you, are, you're, you serialize your first 500, you probably won't serialize these because you're only going to get a couple of them. You're probably going to get 5, 10, 15 of them. They're off the line. They're just there. They're production quality, but they're not. A, you don't improve them because they are simply for QC. They're to make sure your production team, your manufacturer, your co-packer, or your your packaging company, your distribution company, that your product was able to go from raw material to you. You would just be the, the end customer to make sure it all works. And it actually showed up and it is what it's supposed to be. So that means that your production prototype, it could come in the packaging that is supposed to ship through your distribution channel, through your distributor, through your box packaging uh, company. It's all there. And so you're able to then open it and QC it and know, okay, well here, everything is there or catch an issue. Um, and so if basically as long as you don't catch any issues there, then you're free to go into production. Otherwise, you go through some iterations. Um, so those those are the four main types, cosmetic fit, function and pre pre-production, and then production prototype, which is really just production, just the first couple to make sure you did it right. Um,